Uh, hi, good afternoon. And uh, before I even start to introduce myself uh, or ourselves, this is the third time we've been to an Asia VR convention. But this is the first time we are really addressing an audience and being able to share um, what we do and a bit of background or you know uh, how we came about and stuff like that. Um, but I think if there are any developers in the house who probably have seen uh, me talk at the last event, which we've been on way too long. Right, but today I think we're going to focus a bit more on like the overall big picture, right? How what we do um, affects business and how the business or how what people want has affected uh, how we do things as well, right? So that's that's what we're going to cover today, right? So I'm going to hand over the mic to my other co-founder. Um, yeah, so hello, uh, I'm Carl, and uh, basically I'm the tech uh, behind the company, right? Uh, right now it's just the four of us. Myself, uh, my co-founder Faris, uh, he'll introduce himself. There's uh, another two guys in the audience, Terence and Sas. But basically, it's just us. Yeah. Hello, guys. My name is Faris, and I am the co-founder of Uba VR, together with Carl. So, about um, a year back, I would never expect that I would be doing this because I was on the BlackBerry for seven years, and I could not meet anyone to convince me to not go off the Koti keyboard until I met Carl. So I met him, he's always messing around, and he's a distant relative of mine, he's always messing around in his bedroom, um, mucking around with his uh, computers, uh, <laughs> or so he tells us. And so one day I've always been interested in properties, I'm a keen investor in property, I've got about uh, five properties in Singapore, and so when I met Carl for the first time round, he actually made sense to me. So he showed me on, on his um, computer that he was building up a mock-up of a room, so I said, could you change the walls, could you change the color, could you change the sofa, could you change uh, the look of the rooms and whatnot. So he came back to me, uh, it was about a week after Raya, and he called me up and said, yeah, yeah, I managed to do so, whatever that you, 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 you've done. So I said, okay, cool, come, let's meet. So I met him up, and I was really blown away, uh, because I thought I've seen it all over in the property side on how they try to market their properties. And then I told Carl, I said, this is, we, are, we could be on to something here. Why don't we take this further? So Carl said, no, I can't. I've got to feed my family. I've got to pay my mortgage and whatnot. So I said, okay, it's okay. Never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll pump some money into this and we'll take it further. So uh, long story short, thereafter, we had to finance ourselves. So what we did was to prove our concept that VR could be used for today's uh, marketplace uh, for property. We entered the renovation space. So you think it was most uh, simple for us to show people how their renovation is going to look like. So we had a 100% closing ratio and our turnover in a space of less than 5 months was about 1.3 mil. So we closed all the cases that we went to. Uh, but we were taken away from what we actually wanted to do because we were left all the way up to 3 m and I kid you not, me and Carl. Uh, we were scrubbing the floors, washing the toilets of the client's completed property. So I was telling him, we're not supposed to do this. Huh? This is not what we set out to do. It was a real tough job, money was good, but we were not making strides in, in delivering what we actually wanted to do, which was to do VR for real estate developers. So thereafter, I told him, let's, let's just cancel all of this. We start, restart again. And we tell our clients we're not doing this anymore. And we pass it over to someone else. And then so me and Carl started um, again a reset into uh, VR for real estate technologies and we uh, for real estate developers sorry and we managed to convince a couple of developers to take us uh, on board so we got a few projects Al along the way we realized that we are not just providing VR for just real estate developers um, because we were approached by um, uh, a very large hospital over in Singapore to do up VR for um, MRI patients for kids under 12, so we can have them. The problem is, okay, let's just tell you, the, the problem is kids under 12 um, wriggle a lot, and it's very difficult for them to sit still while they go through MRI because of the sound, they're scared and whatnot, so they're unsure what to do. Uh, so they go under GA, general anesthesia. So parents are not so keen on that, but we have got to do that for, for the surgery to take place. So we're supposed to come up with a solution for that. And thereafter, um, PSA approached us to set up VR for the containers and delivery of the cranes that they are buying overseas. So we've got two international products that we are going to launch to market. I think go to plan around 
eight to around uh, eleven months time, lead time. Uh, there are, but for now, we are focused on the real estate space over in Singapore. Um, these are some of the quality of our VR renderings that we have done thus far um, for Wuba VR. Uh, this is a property that we delivered over in uh, Kuala Lumpur in Bansa South for one of the real estate developer. The property is going to be launched over in right. July 26. Um, this is a BPO, a book to order. HDB space over in Singapore. It's a real house actually, so this is a real house. This is a real house over in, in Shalford. Uh, it was during our Renault days. That was our last contract that we closed. Um, so who, to answer your question, who are we? Um, I'm not too sure what we do actually. So we've gone through, I've really gone through the roller coaster space of, of, of finding a technological company and it's not something that 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 I can share in a space of just twenty minutes. Yeah, but but, yeah. but I think basically, um, what Faris is trying to say because he's a business guy, right? So he would have never imagined himself in a space like this. And I mean, um, uh, every day, you know, uh, we are learning new things as far as um, uh, yeah. business is is concerned and what the market wants. You know, like for example, the projects that you mentioned, uh, the yeah. like other use cases apart from property because I think once people have seen what we can provide yeah. and uh, the quality that we, we give right um, they want to use it in many other use cases as well right so whether it's medical space uh, or like uh, yeah, industrial space things like that right people need um, things like visualization right which is which is what like in the property space a lot of developers spend a lot of money uh, on visualization Right, uh, where they pay companies to do renderings, right, and they're paying like uh, five figure sums, right, for simple animations and things like that, right. So, what how we provide, and maybe we are going to go through as well, right, how yes. VR and um, how we apply VR um, actually saves uh, businesses money, right, at the same time providing um, their users uh, a wider range of experience, you know, rather than just. Um, a can animation that you see on an advertisement somewhere, right? So maybe you want to go through the... Okay. Uh, we provide VR for yet to build spaces. So and in Singapore, when we buy properties, we buy it off the plans, right? So what we see, we go into the showroom, we look at how the showroom is supposed to look like, we look at the mock-up of that physical display as well as the mock-up of the rooms, and then we buy it off that. Overseas, especially in... Um, uh, we went to Abu Dhabi, yeah? Uh, what they do, they buy properties once the property is built up, then they buy. Uh, so it's a different uh, thing altogether over in Singapore. Uh, but actually, to be honest, um, yet to be built spaces for our kind of uh, product that we provide, we will be better off um, selling um, Wuba over in um, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, and not in Singapore. Because real estate developers are afraid to take on um, to take this up because of the legalized kind of uh, legal problem. because of the legal issues that renderings have for them now than previously. Uh, so Far East City have got a lot of problems with clients who buy over the the properties and then said that oh if your uh, bay window is actually higher than the ones that I saw over in in the showroom. So we have such issues as well. Um, but anyway, that's an uh, issue for us to face content with. Um, this is why we think Uber VR would be good for real estate developers. It increases confidence for off the plan property purchases. You can actually know, realistically speaking, this after you put on the headset, how large uh, 550 studio apartment actually is. Uh, and not just look at the valuations on paper on, on, why, it's, on why you should buy simply because it's cheap. Uh, it provide unparalleled, so that's what it does. It provides unparalleled spatial awareness of the space and size that you're buying. Um, we can actually change the color of uh, the tiling. Uh, we've tied up with, with um, tile manufacturers over in Singapore for you to immediately change um, tiles over so you can have a look of how your tiles is going to look like. Maybe you want it in black and white, you want it in different laminate color, you want it in different vinyl uh, color, you can do that. Um, we have allowed, we are trying to go to market um, via smartphones. So the difference between us and other companies is that we are able to provide that VR experience over just using your smartphones instead of just having you 
desk bound to uh, an Oculus and you need like a $3,000 or $4,000 um, PC. Yeah. PC. Um, so we, 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 it's available via Android and iOS. Um, so that's greater marketing reach for the marketing departments for all the real estate developers. Um, it's a very interesting experience for potential buyers. We have got, uh, when we're trying to sell it to uh, clients over in Malaysia, uh, the marketing departments like it a lot because uh, for, um, for, for sales whereby they were doing at shopping centers, uh, it was a good outreach program for them to bring clients in and convert it from a very cold client to, to, to a potential lead. Um, you can change fixtures and fittings in real time for um, furnishings um, companies. We've signed up with Nuke and Penny for that. So I, I just want to add as well, you know, um, I think from a technological standpoint as well, right, most of the other VR companies out there, um, especially the ones you see on mobile. So in the mobile space, most uh, companies that handle real estate, uh, they use 360 images, uh, panoramas, uh, or you have like Metaport, for example, right, where you need a physical space to capture, right? Um, so if it's not a physical space, yeah, they will render out the 360 panoramas and basically you're jumping from one panorama to the next. So um, if you want the real-time 3D, a lot of times you have to go for the higher-end uh, VR um, systems, right, like your Oculus and your Vive, you know, because you need the horsepower to render out <laughs> large and compact scenes. So what uh, we have able, we, we've been able to do, right, uh, technologically is to optimize the scenes um, to a point where, um, yeah, I'll go through a little bit about how we've uh, improved the fidelity of our work uh, as we've gone along. So <coughs> I think that having uh, met a lot of like the people in the real estate space, uh, property developers, uh, architects, uh, people in interior design, right? One of the main things that uh, I think a lot of companies can't get with VR right now at the moment is like uh, uh, proper uh, yeah, high-end renderings, especially on mobile uh, and in real time, right? So if you want to have a real-time experience, you either spend a lot of money developing uh, like uh, a standalone scene uh, for, for an ocular system, uh, or you just have a few 360 panoramas, right? And the market rate for one panorama render is about, you're talking about like five to $8,000 for a single render, right? So what we do, right, is basically we, re we build the whole space based off a plan or based off existing 3D files. Uh, we use a lot of optimizations. We have our own uh, shaders and uh, we have a lot of our own processes in place, right, to make sure that you run smoothly, right? So uh, all our scenes are running at, uh, yeah, basically uh, 60 frames a second. Uh, on uh, an iOS or smartphone, uh, or a smartphone, right? Uh, and I think one of the things that we want to do as well is target um, every um, sector, right? Uh, every um, step on the, along the way, right? So you have your Google Cardboard experience, right? Which is what we, we offer, right? And then you go up to the Gear VR as well, right? And then also right now we are looking into introducing it to uh, WebGL, right? So more open platforms. So anyone with any device can actually view the spaces, right? So. Uh, all the content will be just published uh, onto all platforms, you know, and I think that's something that a lot of companies uh, have difficulty with, right, getting that uh, parity between the platforms. It's quite challenging in that sense. Um, so with a lot of the techniques that we put into place and what I'm going to go through um, in a bit uh, is, uh, yeah, the biggest feedback is that you, we need to improve our, our fidelity, right, and I think, like, I mean, from a business standpoint, I understand, right, it needs to look as good as the uh, the renders, right, you know, like uh, those proper um, high-end architectural renders, that's how good uh, it's got to look like, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, they don't care that, about the technology behind it. That's what we've realized, you know. And I mean, you go into to meetings and I think um, initially when we were presenting ourselves, presenting our technology and whatnot, um, we were very defensive, you know, in saying that, oh no, the technology is only this much and this much and there's only so much we can do. But we realized that as far as business goes, as far as what needs to get to the consumer, it doesn't really matter. They don't care how you do it, right? As yeah. long as you get the results out there. So, um, for myself, you know, it's always a challenge to try to achieve what people have asked us to achieve. And we've gotten all kinds of funny uh, requests, yeah, which uh, maybe I can mention bits and pieces later on. But uh, I think improving the fidelity and getting up to like your, your high-end rendering, that's um, been quite a big focus, right? Yeah. So, uh, what we've been able to do, right, is actually... Um, that's where we started at uh, on the left side, right? That, that was an early render, 
And, and all these scenes are real time, um, and you can walk around them uh, on your phone, right? And then we have come to a point where we are on, on the right side, and I don't think we have a, a photo of the actual property, right? But yeah, we, we, we do, we do, we do. Oh yeah, so that's so this was the first time around when we actually showed it to the client and we got the project. And then after Tech in Asia, we had a, I've got I've got a story to share. So me and Carl, we were raising capital for the company with all the investors in Tech in Asia. And then there was always this one girl who was always a timekeeper. So at the end of the two days, she came up to us and she said, "I've seen a lot of VR companies." and we actually want to hire you for projects, but we're building real estate um, development projects over in Indonesia. So she volunteered to be a tech in Asia timekeeper, whereas she's actually a daughter of a very wealthy real estate developer, so she can see on hand all the companies for her com father to invest in. So she told us to improve on our fidelities, and so it was from here, this was what secured the project, and we've improved it to this. Yeah, so go back, Terence, to the, our rendering. Yeah, ah, so this so is the this actual uh, rendering, right? And then go to the photo. And this yeah. is so that's yeah. So that's an actual photo of the property, right? So what we want to do is we want to present uh, as close to what you will get yeah. uh, as possible, right? Uh, as photorealistic as possible, right? And that's been very very tough, especially with mobile. And I and I'm sure that you guys are familiar with like the technologies. Uh, that power VR, right? Basically, you've got uh, Unity and you've got Unreal Engine, right? Uh, Unity is a bit easier, it's a bit cheaper to use. Uh, Unreal, yeah, Unreal um, uh, it's a bit more technical, a bit more expensive to develop for. So what we did is we kind of uh, met somewhere in the middle. Uh, so we use a lot of um, our own techniques, our own rendering techniques to actually get close, I, I hope, close to Unreal quality on Unity, you know? So I think that uh, one of the, the things that we've gotten very recently is when people see the projects, right, they don't immediately think it's Unity, you know, they actually have to ask us, hey, what are you actually using to render it, you know, and I think that, that to me is um, quite uh, an honour because a lot of Unity projects end up looking like Unity projects, right? so when, <laughs> yeah, so when you, when, you, when you go beyond that, I think it's, it's quite a, a feat, uh, and so this is, um, yeah, just going through again, um, yeah, and a lot of the time, uh, we get beat down, you know, when people say our quality is not good enough and it keeps you up for nights, you know, where you just need to nail it. Yeah, it keeps me up for nights. Yeah, I haven't slept because I'm, I'm, I'm solving now other issues, right? So, uh, but that's just the life, right, of a, of a, of a developer. Uh, and this is, okay, this, so this is an example of the, one of the properties that we are doing uh, that I think Faris mentioned in KL. Uh, and that's the render that was provided to us by... Uh, the developer, right? And this is what we came back with um, like a couple of weeks later, right? And then I was a bit taken aback when they said that, yeah, but it's still not up to snuff, you know? But but I, I suppose you always, as a developer, and the developers in the house, you know, you always kind of get tunneled and think that, okay, it's good enough, you know? And then when, 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 when people say that, nah, you know, not, yeah, you need to improve it, yeah, you got to take it in your stride and just, okay, move on from there, right? So this is what uh, where we are at now, right? Uh, if if there is time later, if you all are interested, you can come around. We can you, you can yep. do a demo, and uh, we've got it on Gear VR and um, Google Cardboard. Uh, but basically, this is exactly uh, what you see in in Unity. Right? This is actually a render from Unity itself. Yeah. So so, uh, and it's all interactable. You know, there's no, it's not a 360 panorama and stuff like that. Right? You can walk around. You can interact with the space. Right? So and then we could also allow changing of furniture, um, materials, and all that. Right? But Again, that's always, uh, at the end, what the client requires from us. Yeah, yeah so uh, just to give you, okay, so this is, this is an interesting um, uh, project to bring you through because, yeah, this is like really, really very early on, right? And this is like what your typical Unity uh, render would look like. You, know, you just use the basic lights and all that, right? So I spent a lot of time, and on the right, I think we, we, we improved it a little bit, but still, you know, we're using what's going to Unity. Right, so uh, next. Uh, and so now, what I switch the focus to, right, instead of trying to uh, nail the Unity lighting, um, go into V-Ray, right, and extract the uh, lighting info from V-Ray and apply it uh, into Unity, right. So that's what uh, we've been able to do. So you can see the V-Ray render on the left, that's straight out of um, 3D Max, and then on the right, that's real time in Unity, right? Which you can walk around, uh, you can interact with the scene, right? Uh, and 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 you know, I was mentioning, right? It cuts a lot of the, the cost and time for companies to do rendering as well, because basically, um, 
the rendering time it takes us to come to this is the rendering time of a single frame of a whole animation. Yeah. Right, so if you have like a, a five minute animation, or even a one minute animation, I'm talking about hundreds, thousands of frames, right? So we are cutting down that time, um, giving affordable costs for full VR experiences like this. Yeah. We had offers from two rendering companies to buy us over after after we managed to crack the V-Ray, or rather Carl managed to crack the V-Ray uh, code from this to this. <laughs> um, but we are not selling out yet because we feel that uh, can get a higher valuation uh, post all of this. Um, it's a different way of thinking altogether from the current uh, rendering guys to how a gamer will actually develop such a technology. Um, it was the guy was really scratching his head huh, when he when we put him through the process. Huh? So how a rendering company and how a rendering artist actually does his renderings is actually totally different from how a developer and how a um, game engineer develop the technology altogether. So I think one, one of the interesting things we have found, especially in the real estate space, is that um, a lot of companies are, are sticking to uh, very traditional methods, you know. Um, yeah, you get your high resolution, uh, V-Ray renders, you know, and then there's a lot of post work done in Photoshop and all that. Um, and, and it's a large amount of money that's paid for stuff like that. And um, from what I know in the industry, you know, I mean, people are looking into VR, but um, it's not their brain, but they don't see it as something that they need to, 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 to get into yet. So we are taking the opportunity right, to push the technology as far as we can, especially on mobile, because we believe that that's still the most accessible form of VR. You know? um, everyone's still going to have a mobile phone, and it's only going to get better. Right? Uh, the next few generations of mobile uh, VR is probably going to come leaps and bounds, especially with like, uh, Google. Um, putting a lot of um, time and investment into uh, the daydream, right? Uh, so, so yeah, very interesting things in the mobile VR space that we, we yeah, we hope to, to, to develop further. You know, I mean, I'm always interested to take on challenges, uh, and also there's so many other interesting technologies. And one of the things uh, I think for for the developers here is that you know, if you look at, at Unity, you know, for example, right, it's so flexible because with the assets that you have, right, with the, um, with, with, with whatever you have there, you can publish into any platform, you know, and I think that's very, very important, especially where the marketplace is concerned. You know, you need to put your stuff out there. You have to make sure it works on every device on the market, yeah. So that's what we are striving for, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah so I, uh, maybe just uh, give you a bit of feedback or story behind this, you know. So one of our uh, recent meetings <laughs> with some of our clients, right, and these were a bunch of, like, maybe, uh, middle-aged chaps, right? Fifties, um, uh. in the fifties, yeah. They hadn't hadn't really um, tried out VR before, right? And uh, they were they were kind of you know skeptical, you know, like oh yeah yeah yeah. And then uh, one of the guys put it on, and then I said yeah yeah yeah. Press the button, tap the button, and you can walk. And then he started walking, and then he jumped. You know, he, he jumped out of his chair, and then he said, oh my god, I'm falling up. Uh, the window, right? Because I didn't put any collision. Uh, so, yeah. So, so, so that was, yeah. So it's exactly like something like what you see here, right? So, so I mean, to see reactions like that um, from regular people, regular users, right? I mean, this is an exciting roller coaster scene. It's just like an apartment building, right? But to get that kind of feedback that, wow, uh, they really can sense and feel the space, right? I think that, yeah, it, it's a good feeling to see it affect people in that way. Yeah, we entered a meeting. We've got like five real skeptical <laughs> businessmen, yeah. top end, um, higher management in PSA. Yeah. So we're supposed to sell them VR, and these guys are, are really, really, they've got something up their ass, and they're not going to listen to us at all. Yeah, I hope nobody is here. Oh, uh, is there anyone from PSA? <laughs> so then the guy that, that, that jumped out, he was, he's the one that's liaising with us right now to push this technology in PSA. So we hope he's going to have a very happy and profitable ending. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's just basically um, our story for our now. story. Yeah. And uh, what we wanted to share, you know, a bit of the business, a bit of like the tech, the, the tech challenges, right? Yep. And, and, and I think one of the biggest things is to see uh, how many people are actually interested in, in taking the technology further, right? Uh, companies are interested in products, they are interested in developers, right? And previously, I was never a kind of person who would stand up on stage or go to events and things like that. I don't like it. I'm an antisocial dude. I'm in my bedroom, you know, uh, messing with my stuff. Uh, but 
putting yourself out there, right? People are looking for for, for jobs, for work, um, especially in this space, right? So, yeah, I think one of the, the the lessons I've taken is yeah, just put yourself out there. You never know what could come. Yeah, it, it really is quite crazy. Yeah. So thanks for your time. Thank you yeah. for your attention. Hi, once again, thanks a lot to Varia for coming down. Okay, so uh, this.